Terry, how are you doing? I'm good. It's so good to see you. It's been absolutely ages. We were just saying, I haven't seen you for years, but uh, but this year has been an incredible year in many ways for all of us. But have you ever celebrated an album's success like this one? Um, Terry, I think um, people think that when you get um, great chart positions, you go off and go crazy and but 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 at my point of life i think relief is the biggest emotion um i don't know what it is with records more than anything else that first two days when you get your figures in it's it's like you know am i still here do people still want me that that they're the sort of questions that go through my head and of course it's a it's a massive um uh, achievement and even to finish a record but then for people to engage in it and enjoy it it, it it's really big so I, I'm really thrilled well I think in many ways because when you first said you were going to do this album now your your music taste and your music talent is eclectic and you do all sorts of stuff you've always taken risks both with intake that as a solo artist but in a way I, I listened to this album which I you know you know I'm going to love it anyway and I absolutely love this album it's almost to me like the album that you've spent your entire career getting ready to make um, but it was a bit of a risk wasn't it because it's so different to what the take that fans would expect yeah but you know what that that's what I do this for um you know I the worst possible compliment for me would be to someone say oh I love this album it's just like the last one that's a fail for me I always want to keep pushing and and the actually the visual came before the sound for me cuz you know my audience they've been faithful and followed us for like 30 years and I thought it was time I thought it was time to grow up a bit and have it so they walk in the back of that arena and they see an orchestra on stage I felt like it was that point of my career um so of course then musically putting that into its pocket and wrapping it up the way I wanted it to and writing the songs even for it. That was a whole different thing. I just felt like visually that's what people were ready for and then I needed to make the musical version of that. I've asked you this question lots of times before, but did you go in there deliberately and determined to make timeless classics? Because, you know, I know that this is one of your favourites, if you can have a favourite on your own album, but This Is My Time is just, to me, it sounds like a song that will be around f way after we've gone. Oh, I hope so. I mean, that's, uh, listen, as, as songwriters, that's all we're ever trying to do is to make music that will outlive us all, I guess. Now, when I come into the studio, I don't come in on that Monday morning and go, right, today, you know, I'm going to write a timeless classic. The, the thrill to me of making albums and going into studios every day, and this is what draws me in, is that I don't know what's going to happen. Anything can happen. And that is the, the roller coaster that music is. That's why I'm still here. That's why the feelings never faded. That's why my work ethics never changes, because... I have had pieces of music which I've written in 20 minutes, which honestly have changed the course of my life. I think we've known one another long enough for me to be able to say that I actually don't think you've changed. Fame, fortune, international success, meeting royals for lunch, it doesn't change you. Not at the heart, I don't think. Um, you know, my life's definitely different. I go up and see my mum a lot. Um, she still lives in the town I was born in and... Yeah, I've changed since then. Um, and I've also had years, and may maybe I'd avoided you in these years, but I've, I've had horrible years when I was a completely different person. Um, but I, I think it's going to, to those edges um, and treading over those lines which makes you retreat, I think, at some point. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely at this point... It's some of the best years I've had the last few years. And, and I think part of that's growing into your skin and knowing when you make mistakes and learning from them and, and, you know, learning from your surroundings and also kids growing up, you know, and having a life. And, and even the years like this, you know, I mean, we're all going to know what's important after this year. And one of the things we've all been reminded of, the thing that was right in front of us is the, how important family is. And we've all come to that determination this year and it, and it and so yeah i've lived a life and um you know i'm i'm kind of a do you know the other thing was sorry i'm giving you the longest answer to the shortest question um but 
so many times recently I've I've looked back to the years when I used to play in the clubs um, and so many of those lessons and I think we do as as people we learn so many of our lessons in our younger years and our teenage years I've been referencing more on this album than in other than in years of making music I've looked back to those times because uh, like you say I've kind of grown into this album and if it, it's been time definitely to do it you talked about the kids so tell me what are your family what do they think about this album well da- Daisy's my only fan left in the house Terry now uh- <laughs> Everyone else, they've they've had years of it and they've had enough now. Um, but da- Daisy is the one who you she she might sneak in the back at some point. She often does as I'm doing these these things. Um, but she spends her life coming in and out of here. She in in the lockdown, you know, she'd do her work and then at the end of the day she'd come in to see what I was working on. Um, and she she just loves it and I love her loving it. Um, but I'm afraid our oldest. 20 now, Terry. I mean, he's got no interest in what I do. And our, our middle's 18. Um, but yeah, our 11-year-old, we're, we're holding on with both hands to her. Every minute counts. Every second counts. Um, so um, let's, let's talk about the album success we have. But you got, uh, I'm sure, c- celebratory, congratulatory texts and uh, WhatsApps from all the band members. Who was the first to say congratulations? Mark was the first. Yeah, Mark. Mark's on this stuff. He he he. Um, because I play. I mean, obviously, the lads have heard stuff before it's released. Um, and Mark uh, came just before the. Um, well, it was before lockdown, so it must have been January, February, and um, I played him through, and he, you know, he was saying, "What's it? What's the tour going to look like?" and all this. So, you know, we we all try and support each other. Now, the one thing I always say um, to the lads and to anyone who ever asks is that my number one job is being in Take That. That that is my main... If I was to write out you know, job description. That That's what I do. Um, but we've we've been on this tour, um, a make album tour thing for about 14 years, every two years. And everyone just wanted a little break. Um, and in those breaks, when we have them, I either do theatre shows or do songs for movies or or albums like this um so this is my way of filling time really i i still retreat very happily to the band when they're ready so many people who've done what you've done for me and that stuck with me always supported me but you have to understand that you know that the people the what especially the ones who were there for me when no one cared they're the ones that, and I can count them on one hand, they're the ones that I'll hold with me forever. And that's why when you come to see my shows and stuff, you know, a lot of our band have been with us for since 92. You know, a, a lot of our staff, our tour manager, our security, they've been with us since the start. And that's because we appreciate them. Christmas, of course, it, tomorrow is Christmas Day. I, I hope you have yep. the most fantastic Christmas. What plans have you got at home there? Uh, probably the same as you. We are doing zero this Christmas. We're cooking, we're drinking, we're going to watch films, we're going to turn back time and make it like a traditional Christmas. And and everyone knows, you know, we've really tried not to push against this thing. You know, no one really knows where it's going and what it's doing. So we're like, we're not going anywhere. I don't want to get on a plane right now. I'm just really going to enjoy the simplicity of being at home with your family. Uh, well, you have the most fantastic and magical Christmas. Thank you for everything. Uh, great, great album. We love it. And uh, I hope I see you in real life soon. Uh, but can I just wish you will. Well, can I wish you and the whole family the very merriest of Christmases? And thank you again and have a great time. Terry, God bless you, mate. And good to see you always.